the pointlessness is the beauty of it. We're not training, we're not racing, we're not doing anything that hasn't been done before. We're not fucking making a million dollars. We're just riding our bikes. You can go harder when you're not really doing it for a reason. You're just out there laying it on the line for the sake of doing it because you enjoy doing that. So you just want to push yourself even harder. And it doesn't matter if you blow up. You're not going to be at the ass of a bike race. Hey guys, it's Jackson from Thought for Food Lifestyle and I'm really excited to bring you a podcast interview with Lachlan and Gus Morton, two professional cyclists and brothers who have created this film series, documentary adventure film series called Thereabouts. And um, I recently had the honor and privilege to sit down with them and have a conversation about this film which is really about reigniting that love of the sport of cycling and transcending the actual sport of cycling and, and instead using the bike as a vehicle for adventure and for uh, travel and doing epic shit. And for me, it was just a really cool way to share with you guys, um, the, the viewers of Thought for Food TV and the listeners to the Thought for Food podcast, um, sort of a different side of that adventurous lifestyle. We didn't talk about nutrition. We didn't talk about health. Um, it's really about that love of, love of the sport and passion for adventure. And um, so I recorded the first 15 minutes of the interview with this camera. Um, so you can check that out right now. And then be sure to go listen to the full interview um, at tfflifestyle.com slash tff054. You can also listen to the episode on SoundCloud, on iTunes, or really any sort of podcast app that you use. Um, and so I really hope you enjoy. Definitely be sure to check out Thereabouts on Vimeo, and we'll talk to you soon. Enjoy. Lachlan and Gus, thank you for uh, coming to Thought for Food, man. Really excited. I've been following you guys are doing for a while, and it's, it's, it's just really great to have finally connected. Um, super funny how that happened, but... Um, yeah, I kind of first want to just talk about thereabouts. So you guys uh, are, you know, in the middle of, of kind of working on a third movie, but I want to talk about sort of how the first film came to be. Why, why did you guys decide to make that? And, and first, I guess, what is thereabouts? Um, yeah, thanks, man, for having us on. Um, thereabouts, I guess, like, uh, I guess we'll look, I should probably tell the story of how the first film came to be because thereabouts kind of came as a result or like what thereabouts is it's kind of as a result of, of what happened on that first film um, it sort of started like midway through 2013 um, Lockie was racing in Europe with Garmin and uh, and I was in Australia working for the, the ABC making a, uh, a television show um, and Lockie kind of contacted me and was like, oh, and we we're just talking and he was like, oh, we should go and ride. I think it began with, um, we should go and ride through Thailand. There's some big mountains in Thailand and Lockie was like, yeah, we should go and ride there and just, you know, like take a backpack and kind of go. And, um, and yeah, that's kind of like the start of the idea. And then halfway through 2013, he's like, we've got to go and do this, you know, we're not having a good time here in Europe and we need to go and I hadn't ridden he's like yeah you need to get back on your bike and do something and so we sort of we didn't pick a route or anything like that but we sort of settled at the time frame we had we sort of only had a couple of weeks that we could do it and uh, and so Australia made sense and then so we sort of agreed on it but didn't really like nail it down and then um, I came back from i had been in America working and doing bits and pieces um, for a couple of months and I came back and I think it was the beginning of November and we met that first day uh, when I got back and we went for a ride like the first ride I'd been on in years <laughs> and that was kind of the beginning of like okay, I'm going to start we're going to like commit we're going to commit to this thing let's ride like through the outback or something and we're going to start training today and so yeah so <laughs> that was sort of how it came about and then you know, over the month of November 2013, we kind of figured out where we were going to, what route we were going to do and how we were going to do it. We sort of thought, well, ideally we'd have someone come with us, you know, because Lockie had to train, obviously, um, for, 
for the, the season. Um, so we thought we should bring someone so we can, so you know we can kind of do it a bit more properly as opposed to like carrying all of our shit. And then if you know if we couldn't get someone to drive the car, then we would just I guess carry it and go as far as we could, and then just fly back or catch a train back or whatever. Um, and so yeah, we got a guy Chris Varco sort of said a couple of weeks out that he'd do it. And then a couple of days before we left, a mate of mine Scott, he didn't have any work on like me and you know we were sort of we're having lunch one day and having a beer and we were just talking about the trip he's like fuck I'm not doing anything can I come I'm like <laughs> that sounds interesting we're like yeah sweet come so that's yeah that was how the first trip happened and then we just rolled out of, of where we lived and where we grew up sorry the town where we grew up and yeah and I guess the the rest is in the film. <laughs> and so how has it evolved into these next two films? Like what would have been the biggest kind of changes in terms of how you approached it? Because the first one seemed very rough around the edges. Like that was kind of the point. You guys did it yourselves. You sort of, you know, just winged it. But the second one was much more polished and much more um, kind of like, you know, the, the, the film quality was, was higher and there was definitely much more of a story. So how did it, how did it evolve into that? I, I guess like the first one we never intended on really making a documentary out of it. Yeah. <clears throat> it just kind of uh, happened as the trip went on and then afterwards like I didn't I didn't understand documentary at all but Scotty and Gus were like yeah there's something here. Um, and then the response to the first one was really good. Uh, and obviously like it was a lot of fun doing the trip and Initially on the first time we took cameras because like it'd be cool if maybe next time we could bring a sponsor on board who can pay for it and then we can like do these trips and not have to like do it for free. Yeah. <laughs> that was the the dream. Um, <laughs> and so yeah, after that we're like, well we should we should do another one. Like we both started racing pro again. And we were both here, um, and we were just kind of motivated to do another trip and. We got a specialist came on board and gave us some money, so then we're like, all right, let's do it. Um, but then us being us, we're like, well, if we're going to do it, we want to do it properly. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the second one was definitely like, uh, it was a lot of fun. Like, it was an awesome trip, but it was it was different and like, it was a different experience. Um, we learned a lot from doing it, and it was still like that period of like yeah like what is there about it's just kind of an idea right it's yeah. not really um, it's not really anything it's just right writing like it's different for everyone um, yeah but even making that I don't think we we're really sure what it was we were doing or we thought mm -hmm. we had an idea but um, you know we sort of learned that the trip is just is the trip <laughs> you know it's not um yeah, each one's different, like it's not yeah. one thing. Yeah, and that's what I love about Thereabouts, I think, and why so many other people love it is, I mean, there's a million cycling documentaries out there that focus on the training and the, like, you know, the pain and all that, but I think what you guys are doing is, is you know, transcending the sport of cycling and using the bike as, a, you know, sort of a tool or a vehicle for adventure. Um, so, I mean, why did you guys feel like that needed to happen, and why do you think cycling in, in general as a sport needs that I think like it, what I think the beauty about like as Lockie said about the first film and subsequently then the idea was that it, it happened so like accidentally yeah um, to avoid using the word organically like it just sort of happened and you know we were being ourselves on that trip and we were genuinely interested in you know like the people, you know, like that we, that love, like there's that, there's something that we really love and, and that's like going down to the pub, you know, and it's like the old pub and having a beer and sitting there and kind of watching all the different people. Yeah. From all the different walks of life and, you know, like, and, and they all tend to have stories and particularly in country Australia, um, you know, like there's a really strong culture and a lot of these towns are centered around, around that. And so that kind of brought, like, that's what we're really interested in is, is like stories, you know, we like telling stories and, and we like hearing stories and, and like from, 
you know, from people and, and that sort of stuff. And so I think that, that was for us a big part of doing the trip was like, let's ride our bikes because we love riding our bikes. And let's also like do the other things that we love to do. You know, go and hang out at the pub and, and, and chat with these people and go and go to places that you wouldn't typically. And as a result of that, um, that kind of then made the documentary more than just a cycling film. Yeah. Um, I guess. And so, you know, that's what, like it made, it made, it was a film that we, it was a film that was reflective of us, I guess, and our personalities and the things that we like to do. And, and that, yeah, like, as you said, it kind of resonated with people, I guess. And, and so we never felt the need. We never felt like, oh, what's cycling missing? What does it, you know, what needs to happen? Um, we just kind of went and did this thing and we realized then that like the bike enhanced that experience. Right. You know, it would have been different had we just been driving through the outback and stopping at these places. I don't think you get the full understanding necessarily of the journey there, you know, riding on, riding on roads and really having time, I guess, to think about where you are and, and kind of move at that slightly slower place plus slower pace, plus the, the combination of, of the fatigue um, and the sense of camaraderie that that builds. And um, that really kind of pushed us to, you know, be a bit more outgoing than we normally would be, you know, really going and trying to meet people that, that were in these towns because you're like, fuck, you kind of get an appreciation for the town, you get appreciate an appreciation for how isolated somewhere is or how different one town is to the next. And it can be so easy to just get sucked into that cycling world and just only be around cyclists and yeah, take totally. out with cyclists and ride, you know? Totally. And, and there's a whole other world out there. And I think that that, get, that goes for any world. You right. know, like at the time I wasn't a bike rider. I was, hadn't touched my bike really for a long time. And I worked in, in TV and pretty much just hung out with TV people on mm. the same crew. And, and not that there's anything wrong with that, but it's so easy just to do that. Yeah. And like not really branch out um, and and this kind of taught us to do that and we found the bike was a really good way of of, of doing that of making you do that right and of making you have these kind for of me it's kind of like an expression thing because like I'm right ride bikes race bikes and like that's the best way I express myself is through riding yeah and you can't always express that when you race or when you're training there's like limitations to that so it's kind of like the ultimate, for me anyway, it's like the ultimate way I can express myself is through riding on these trips. Cause like, it's what I'm good at. And I'm also doing what I love at the same time. So I guess it'd be like, it'd be like a band, like it'd be like being in the studio compared to like playing a live show, yeah. I guess. It's like, it's like the live show for me anyway, that like where it all comes together, you know, like your ability to ride, you know the the passion for discovering new places and people and it all just clashes in in the one trip so it's just like yeah all the things we really love doing just all together um uh, so it's like it's yeah it's yeah like i mean you guys experience. you know you don't you don't take yourself seriously and you definitely express yourself i mean you're wearing like funky hats and you know weird button-up clothes and stuff and like yeah. and i think that's what people realize and recognize because it's so easy to see you know bike race on TV everyone's in their kits and it's like all sponsor and everyone's perfect and they have to say certain things and it's it's very professional which is you know definitely correct because right. that's it's the sport yeah. but this is sort of like you get it's like an outlet almost yeah. you know yeah totally like like exactly like Lachlan summed it up really well like it's a perfect way to that's our way of expressing ourselves we're not musicians we're not artists you know like so in, in that sense it's kind of our version of a painting or our yeah. version of a song you know these trips um and yeah we it's like out of uniform day at school you know you just get to kind of do do it how you how you want to do it and when and you don't it's not like you don't often think of you don't often approach things in that in that way you don't often approach something like if I was to do this in the perfect like in in the way that I really wanted to do it how would that be and a lot of times you'd be like, well, I don't know, I don't know, you know, I don't really know how I do that. And, and that's true of, of, of these, of, of this, of sport and, and of anything that you do, I guess. And for us it was true. And then it wasn't until you go and do something like this 
that you realize, oh wait, that's what I like. That's how I like to do it. That's what I. So yeah, it's kind of discovering that true creative passion and true, you know, personal um, personal desire to to do something the way you want to do it. And so the first movie was in Australia. Second mm -hmm. one was uh, Colorado to Utah, right? Yep. Two places you guys know very well. Um, yeah. And then this third one is is in Colombia. Um, yeah. What were some of the biggest differences that you guys found, or some of the like most fun experiences that you had that were kind of stark contrast to the first two films? Well, I mean, the third one like was totally different for a number of reasons, but the first reason being that we didn't organize it. Mm. Um, we were kind of approached by some people who were putting a trip together, and we were like, yeah, we'd love to go to Colombia, like I've always wanted to go there. We've raced against the Colombian guys, and you know, you hear all the stories from down there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we basically went in totally, <laughs> like we got our, yeah, fully blind. We got our plane tickets like the day before we Left. We left it like you're leaving on the 15th and then our plane tickets came on the 14th. <laughs> yeah. And now they, they kind of like would email and ask, like, so, you know, we should probably get in the phone and meet each other and we can talk about this film. <laughs> so, like, we get in the phone and they're like, what do you want to know? And like, oh, as little as possible. <laughs> yeah, we kind like, of wanted to just let us know what date we're going to go down there. Yeah. Like, they're like, do you want to? You know, like anything else, we're like no. Nah. <laughs> so you guys didn't even know the route or anything. Right? No, 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 we, we had no nothing. idea. Uh, <laughs> we didn't even know like so, what the people look like. Yeah, any of their backgrounds. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> we just went in fully raw. And you yeah. just brought your bikes and showed up. Yeah, yeah. bikes yeah. showed up. Met the guys and we got there. Like one in the morning, and then like we we're into it. Um, yeah. 